So hello everybody and welcome to another DAX Friday. It's a new DAX function every Friday. In today's DAX Fridays we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do part three of the Eurostat series. On part one I show you how the Eurostat API works. Part two, put in some data from the API. Part three, now we're going to finalize and create the report that you see here, which is basically the total population in Europe and the population change between 2019 and 18. And then you can see the size bubbles here. This is the population change. And the size you see that is here, the size in buckets, and it is uh, formatted. So we're going to basically do all this. There is a API call for the population change, but because we have the population already in Power BI for 2014 all the way to 2019, we can do that calculation ourselves. I check it out. And the population change uh, that you see here is basically the, the population from the year versus previous year. Um, so this year minus the previous year divided by this year multiplied by a thousand. Because as you can see here, they're showing population change per thousand of inhabitants. Okay, so they are normalizing or creating a baseline for it. So we're going to do the same. Instead of importing the data, we're actually going to do the calculation because we know how to do that. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is population this year minus last year. That is time intelligence. We need a calendar. We don't have a calendar yet, so let's create a calendar first. And if you want to follow along, all the files are on the Kerbal download, download Center. I think there's going to be like 64, 65, something like that. So go and grab it. So. We go to Power Query, and I'm going to grab the calendar that I always show you with you guys. So copy that. Again, you are going to get this code if you get the file, if you go to the download center and get it. And we're going to do a new source, blank query. <coughs> Advanced editor. Paste the query. We're going to give it a name. Uh, this is going to be uh, calendar. And we are going to change the dates. This is from 2019. Our data goes back to 2014. So let's change that to 2014. So now the calendar starts to 2014 up to today's date. Now the population for Europe in the API is only up to 2019. So we could actually get rid of year 2020 in here. Or you can li you can leave it. Doesn't matter. We leave it. Um, so that's for that. If we go to the population table, you see that we have years. So I'm going to create a new column that is going to create a date. So we can put the date and date together and then we can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Date. And that is the text from, because year is number, we need to convert it to text from and then put year. And then we're going to concatenate. Remember that I said I have actually a video on how to properly concatenate things, but just for this case, this will be enough. So date, we're going to convert it to a date, please. Uh, did I do something wrong? Yes, I did. Obviously, I need to have that one there. Oop. And now we have our date. We're going to go home and close the line. We need to actually create the buckets, but let's do the calculations first. So see if our date loads. Okay, so now it loaded. We go to the model. I have disabled the automatic detection of relationships, so I have to do it manually. It's just it gives me too much trouble with bigger models at all. Um, so we have the date in there. And then we need to do the typic, typical stuff, year. Not going to do all of them because I'm going to bore you to death. Don't summarize. Oh, it's already. Okay, perfect. Okay. So now, time intelligence. We need to... We have population for you know, the sum of population. We need the population from previous year if you put years on the canvas. So for example, let me show you. If I put a year in here, and then I'm going to hide this. I don't need it anymore. I am going to hide 
state. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to put population there as a table, please. So here you can see population. Uh, let's format that correctly. Should be, yeah, for Europe, right? From the different parts. So the population is increasing slightly. Now we need to have a measure that calculates previous year. With time intelligence, super easy. You go here, new measure. Population previous year, which is calculate population, but when previous year, and then we put our date from the calendar, and then we put it into the table and we see if it is working. Basically, check always your measures, no matter how easy they are, you never know. So now, oh no, it's, yeah, obviously we don't have population for 2020. So if we go in here, how about we get rid of it for now? Year uh, basic is not 2020. So uh, we're going to do population, not that one, that one formatted so we can see. So what you, can see, you should see is that 2019 previous year gives you, this gives you the year of 2018, 2017. So now what we need to do is to create the variance, which is basically the population's difference and then multiply it by a thousand so we get exactly what they had on your stat. So we're going to do that. New measure. So this is I think they call it crude population. Population change, which is change in population by one thousand in inhabitants, and that is divide this year minus previous year divided by this year times a thousand and this should give us the ratio of population change for the different places. In 2014 it's not going to give you the right number because we don't have 2013 data that's all otherwise this is what you'll see. Okay, so now to visualize it, we're going to use the the normal map, uh, the bubble map, I don't know how it's called. So put it in there. And we're going to put latitude, longitude, and population change. That's what we want to visualize. Mm. It says, don't, don't summarize. This is one of the, the few instances where the error actually tells you what to do. How nice is that? And there we have it. Beautiful. So where I am going to just put it by country so we can see a little bit better. Otherwise, there's so many data. Then you can go up and down on the hierarchy as much as you like. So here we have for Spain, we should actually get rid of the Canary Island. Oh, we leave it. Um, if we're going to recreate it exactly the way it is, we need to put a legend and then we need to have um, the color coding. So location, we also want to be able to go up and down into the country hierarchy so you can actually do it on their map you can go in here and then you have the highest level and then you know they iterate country region then they go to municipality and then the cities you can see that <laughs> so for us to be able to do that in power bi we actually need to put the hierarchy in there. So we start with country, 
then this one we need to change this to average in order to work oh, Jesus. okay country and then we have a region then we have county i think i call it here country code oh no municipality and then city is calling this and then as you can see here, you can go up and down in the hierarchy to see this is the regions. Da, da, da. Two point, we should get rid of 2014 because we don't have data for 2013 and that's going to give us trouble. So, dip. They are actually showing, let's do like this, because they are actually showing just for 2019. So let's do the same. So now we have just 2019. So this is the change from 2019 to 2018. We want to color format that. And I have a DAX measure for it that I'm actually going to copy because I don't want you to see me. It takes forever. So let me copy it. So we go to population, new measure. I'm going to put, uh, oh, I, ch I call it something else, pop change. Let me change the, so this is how the, how the measure looks. It's basically a switch and then it says if it's less than 15, this color, if it's less than nothing fancy, actually. The colors are the same as the colors that they use on the, um, on the Eurostat side. I think it's a C, capital C too. So now, so how do we apply the colors now that we have them in a DAX measure? You basically go to the format pane, data colors, and then you use the FX, which is conditional formatting, or like a special formula. And uh, you pick the rules. I never remember which one is it. Is it that one? No, I think it's it field value right it should be there you go okay and then this should change accordingly ah good it's starting to look similar right and let me have map styles we want to put emphasis into the actual bubbles not the colors of the ocean so we should change that to grayscale did it do it so now we have uh, the dark theme on the map. What we need in order to be able to have something similar like this is obviously the legend. And believe it or not, there are no legends in map in Power BI, which blows my mind, to be honest. So we need to create that manually. Let's do that. So we go to Power Query and we're going to create a legend table. Come on. So new source. Uh, no, we're actually going to enter data. Um, there's no need to import from anywhere. So we have here the text for the legend and this is the size. Um, th this column we're going to use to conditional format so we can actually show how it looks. So we're going to put here the legend. Okay. Import that. So, and now what we need to do is to put it as a table. And I am going to call, I want it the other way around. I am going to call text legend. This is going to be nothing. We have our legend there and now we need to color these. And we need to do exactly the same thing, but you know, conditional format this. We have to go to background color and then text in order to get it done. We are going to do based on rules, uh, the sum. Oh, it's because it's not a number, right? That's why it's count. Let me change that. We go very quickly up here. This has to be a number in order to be able to do rules based on the size. Uh, 
So give it a new go. Conditional formatting background color. Uh, sum. So if it is greater than zero and is less or equal than minus 15, 14, I think, then color. And this is where we need to paste the colors that we had before. So I'm going to skip, uh, I'm going to do this and then, uh, you know, skip f fast forward so you don't have to see me click, click, click. So here we have it. Let me show you how it was done. So there are two conditional formatting swaths for background, one for font, and it looks like this. Okay, in case you want to replicate it. Again, you have this file on the Corbel Download Center, so you can just go and grab it. And you will see how everything was done. Um, so I have added now some um, filters. So you can play with them and here again we have the hierarchy you can go from one uh, level to another and you can change country you can yeah all that stuff i've tried to keep the legend up on top but the new setting does not work for me i don't know what i'm doing wrong but anyhow now we have created recreated the map that Eurostat had, we have a direct connection to their API, that means that the data will refresh and this is how it basically looks, it's so cool. One more thing before I go, if you instead of having a bubble map want to have a, a shape map, um, James actually showed me on Twitter that if you use his icon map then you can, you know, use a shape map it looks like this. You will be able to download this, so don't worry. So you have the country code, you have population, and here you will turn on JSON, gear JSON, and you need to put the URL to the JSON level that you want to have because, you know, Eurostat gives you regions in different levels. You have country, region, municipality, and city, so you have to put the right one in here. I will post a link down below also where you get that. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I'm not going to do this video any longer. It is Friday after all. So enjoy your weekend. I will see you again on Monday. And until then, take care. Bye bye.